Welcome back happy hookers and welcome to day 11 of 12 days of coasters. I can't believe we've nearly finished. So today I've decided that we're going to crochet another square coaster because I mean a square coaster is timeless. It's going to go with um, lots of different styles of decor and give you lots of options for gifts for friends and family. We are going to be using a lovely textured stitch called the wattle stitch. Now you may be very unfamiliar with this stitch and it certainly does look quite complicated but I can assure you that this is one of the loveliest and easiest stitch combos to get to grips with and yet it creates this fantastic effect. It's also got a second benefit in that textured stitches can often give you uneven sides and edges meaning that you're going to have to um, edge edge it in a, a single crochet um, or the crab stitch however this pretty much gives you a relatively uniform um, you know size and shape um, you've got a little bit of up and down here and the same here um, basically on the three sides that aren't your foundation chain um, but I really um, don't mind and I actually kind of like that little bit of a little bit of an uneven edge um, because it's not particularly that obvious for this I am using my Siddhar number one chunky and I'm pairing it with a five millimeter hook now if you are using something like a double knit and a four or 4.5 it's absolutely fine um, we'll just discuss how many um, foundation chains you need to make to get yourself um, a relatively um, let's have a look large square and this is this has come out at about a 10 um, and I would say that my foundation chain will probably end up being around an 11 or a 12 bearing in mind that they always feel a little bit longer until the pattern pulls it back so if you're interested in learning how to make this lovely textured square coaster stay tuned to get started with your coaster you're going to need to create yourself a slip knot and then you're going to chain in multiples of three. Now, as I'm using a five millimeter and a chunky yarn, I'm actually going to, uh, I think I'm going to chain 18. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and I'm going to measure that for you with my trusty broken ruler. If you've been following me, you know, I probably need to ask Santa for a new ruler. So, as this is a this isn't really a chunky, I would say this is almost just a little bit above Aaron. However, if I measure this for you, if you are using a double knit, by all means. Um, you know, a four mil and a double knit will work fine. This is going to give me roughly 12 centimetres. And if I measure with my cup, oh, today we've actually got a coffee, caramel latte. First day of my actual official annual leave from work. So very exciting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry I keep having a cough. Um, it's actually just a cold. Um Yes, so please bear with me if I do have a frog in my throat. Um, yeah, 12, 12, 11 and a half. If you were using double knit, what you might want to do is do 21. Um, but realistically, I think as long as you're happy with, okay, that's going to be the width of it. Don't stretch it, don't squash it. Just let it sit how it would naturally sit with your tension. Um, bear in mind that some people do crochet their foundation chain a little bit tighter than normal and if you are suffering from that, um, suffering is probably not the right word, if you are um, experiencing that, um, a good tip is actually to go up a half a hook or um, a hook size for your foundation um, row and then drop down um, it'll just prevent it from pinching in and certainly when you're wanting an exact square um, you're definitely going to want to have that so I've I've crocheted 18 chains by all means as long as you've got a multiple of three you're going to be absolutely fine and the beautiful thing about the wattle stitch if you're not familiar with it 
um, it will be your new favourite, believe me. Um, as textured stitches go, um, I think that this certainly um, is definitely a keeper for me. Okay. Oh, my doorbell has just gone. I will be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm back from opening the door to a delivery of Christmas brownies, just to make you all jealous. So, what we are going to do is we're going to do in the third chain from the hook, so not this one, not this one, this one, we're going to place three stitches. Single crochet, chain, and double crochet all into the same stitch. Just get some more yarn. And it's going to look like this. You're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and into this one here, you're going to place exactly the same. Single crochet, chain, double crochet. skip two, into this stitch place a single crochet, chain and a double crochet. And the reason that I think that this is possibly one of the nicest textured stitches is once you get into a rhythm, the single crochet to the chain to the double just feel like they naturally fit. Sometimes when you're doing combos of stitches, they can feel a bit awkward. It's almost like your hook isn't quite in the right place to transition to that next stitch. Whereas when I single crochet and I've closed, I can then pick up for my chain and then I can pick up again to go back in for my double crochet. And I think that's one of the reasons that this just works so well. Okay, so we're going to skip two. And again, single, chain, double. And what you will end up with is three left. On this first row, we're simply going to, in the very last stitch, place a single crochet. Lovely. How nice is that? Okay, grab some more yarn. Hopefully you've reached the end of your row. Like I say, I like to crochet along with you. So I appreciate, I mean with mine, I've actually got one, two, three, four, five collections. And that's quite an important thing to count early on is how many times did I put my single chain, my double? One, two, three, four, five, because you're going to want to make sure that you're consistently putting the same amount in so that you don't end up with, you know, um, a pyramid or um, a boat. Pyramid or boat, that would kind of be my two ways that we would end up with, um, you know, going a little bit out of, out of sync. Okay, so hopefully you've got to the end of your row and we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. So this is our chain one. This is our single crochet that we put at the end of the stitch and this larger one here is our double crochet that ended our last little cluster. Next to this what you should find is if you give it a little stretch a little bit of a, a hole appearing. Hang on, where are we here? And this is where our chain one space sits. Can we see? I'm going to get this there's the cluster i'm going to uh, separate it for you so can you see you've got a single imagine we went this way well, we did go this way on the last row we've got our single we've got our chain and we've got our double and what we're going to be doing is we're always now going to be crocheting into where that chain one space is now if it helps you to count along the top by all means all you've got to remember is we're not going into our um, turning chain we're not going into our single crochet we're not going into our double we are going into our chain and obviously with it being a chain you're going to be going right underneath the stitch okay so how that's going to work is we're simply into the chain one space from the previous row we're going to single crochet chain and double crochet 
and then we're going to skip the next two stitches because that would be the single from the cluster that we've just crocheted into and the double from the next cluster meaning that the next stitch if I give it a little wiggle is my chain one space so you'll start to get to realize okay I can think skip one two here or as I get more proficient I can think oh okay there we go look I can definitely see these chain one spaces here so we're going to place a single a chain and a double into that space skip skip there we are found the space single chain one double found my next space skipping one two into the space single chain one double and then into the last one so here it is can we see skip skip into this space single chain one and our double so what we need to do now is we need to place a single crochet into our turning chain which is going to have slipped <laughs> down the side here and you see it's going to have slipped down the side so I'm just going to pick that up and place a single crochet and then I'm going to pull the corner out and can you see that's looking like it's nicely squared off I'm going to have a quick check one two three four five you've probably got a little bit extra here but that's because we've got a single crochet and a turning chain but essentially I've only done again five of my clusters so we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work and we're going to repeat the pattern we're going to skip our turning chain skip our single and we're going to go oh okay here can you see and if I look the best way to think about this as well is can you see these four horizontal bars these are your single and your double that you went into your stitch so you're going to know that immediately above here if I give it a little wiggle there we go is my chain one space so we're going to go straight in with a single a chain and a double skip skip okay look for the four horizontal bars coming out of the I don't know why I'm saying horizontal because these are vertical <laughs> you're all going to be putting in the comments that she doesn't know the difference between horizontal and vertical obviously they're vertical so the four vertical bars fanning out I know roughly above there is going to be my chain one space oh dear single <laughs> chain one and double okay hop along here there we go can you see single chain one double the hardest thing about a textured stitch is obviously working out where your um your hook is going which is why i like to promote the idea of becoming familiar with the stitch patterns because whilst it's easy to say skip one skip two and go into the next stitch it doesn't always match up you know um, you could get to the end and be out of sync so it's just giving you different methods to go okay yes i'm definitely going into the right place and also if you did miss a stitch on the one below and you think oh my gosh i forgot to put a chain in between my stitches do not worry even i've done that if you've forgotten to put a chain in between your stitches as long as you're looking for these four vertical bars and you're pretty much getting a stitch in to the right place it really doesn't matter honestly no rules crochet i keep saying i'm going to get some t-shirts with that on okay so I've got one more to go and this will look can you see like it's sloping down but do not worry because once we found where we're going and we put our single without splitting my stitch my chain one 
and my double limb. That's going to give it some real height. So now what we need to do is we need to pop a single crochet into our turning chain. But what we want to make sure is we're definitely putting it in the right place. And I mean, look at that. It's just like a whole load of where do we put it? Okay, so this is the technique. This is the trick. You're not going to be putting it into this next stitch here because can you see this next stitch was the single crochet two little vertical bars coming out of this hole. So if you put your last stitch in there, you are going to find that your edges wobble. This little bit down the side here is, can you see there? So look for the single crochet, which is the next stitch, and go straight into the place next to it, which is where you want to be placing your single crochet. And you'll see, I mean, obviously this bit on my chain always pokes out a little bit, but once I've tied it up at the end, you'll see, okay, that's a relatively straight edge. I'm definitely, I've gone into the right place. Okay, so we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work, skipping our chain, skipping our single, skipping our double, looking for those four vertical bars here we go, this is where, there we go, finger poking through, we're going to place our one single, our chain and our double. Okay, hopefully by now, I mean I tend to use the finger method which is do this and roughly find it. There we go. Okay, so single chain, double, I want a little bit of speed, I do apologise, let's go to the next one, single, chain, double, also do not underestimate stitch markers, I'm going to show you a great method to make sure that you're going into the right place next time, single, chain, double. Okay, and I've got one more here, can you see? Single, chain, double. And I'm also going to at this point go, okay, one, two, three, four, five. As long as you're popping five of those combos in, you are definitely on track. Okay, so it's not this stitch here because this is my single I can see I can see these are my, well my that was my double that was my single it's catching this little bit here that's just on the edge there that's where I'm going to be placing my hook to place my single crochet now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to chain and I'm going to pop my stitch marker in fact it might be easier if I pop my do my turn and put my single crochet in so turning chain and then let's pop the single crochet in because can you see that's actually my single crochet it's almost gone down the side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my stitch marker in to my edge so that next time when we're coming back around, in fact, I haven't caught it all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up from the other side. Sorry, I realise this is a little bit confusing. There we go. Can you see that is the, it's very difficult to catch all of the yarn with this yarn. There we go, right. So. It's just to kind of demonstrate that it's always going to sit on the side because the single is slanting because the way that these clusters are they're almost like this well actually they're almost like this because you've got a smaller stitch followed by a taller stitch which gives it that sort of off kilter fan effect so we've placed our single here we're going to chain one and then we're going to double into exactly the same place looking for that next chain one space along, knowing that we're skipping two stitches to get to it. We're going to single, chain, ooh, 
double and you're probably going to want two stitch markers if you're using this technique because we've well, got two sides Chrissy states the obvious oh just made a little jingle I've definitely had quite a bit of caffeine and maybe need to knock the caramel lattes on the head but they are just so delicious okay chain not chain single chain double single chain double really really like the wattle stitch i think it's up there with textured stitches so i've got one more to go here we go single chain double i'm making sure i'm missing this one here because i know that this stitch here is my single crochet and i'm going down into the one at the side my turning chain and placing my single crochet okay let's pop a stitch marker in this end let's do our turning chain turn locate off place for our first single once we've got our first single in place and we can see okay that's my single this is my turning chain on the side do not worry about picking up exactly the two bars from the turning chain if you end up just sort of going into any bit of it on the edge it isn't going to make a huge amount of difference all you're wanting to do is ensure that your sides are relatively straight and i'm and relatively in the best way possible because they're never going to be razor sharp are they let's be honest there's always going to be a little bit of fluctuation but the nice thing about this is it does not require you to have to edge it like some textured stitches do um, i quite happily leave this as it is um, with my square coaster complete fully reversible as well um, and i don't actually edge them at all i mean you can edge them if you want to with a single crochet perfect so i'm going to do one more row with you and then shamefully um i am going to leave you to it because i think you know it'll be another <laughs> another 22 minutes of me doing exactly the same thing and i think you've got um you know a really good foundation now for knowing where you're going and it's simply a case of of taking it till it's um a square um, and all i do for that is i keep folding it like this until the top matches the side here and when I'm happy I'm happy so we've got a chain to do and we've got a double to pop in this one there we go finding the place single chain double single chain double single chain double and my last one because I know that I do five for my count so single chain and double and here we can see a nice end where we've got our stitch marker and can you see look it just shows you how far round that turning chain actually ends up because of that slanted so pop that out and make sure that you're going into now oh, I actually don't go fully into the turning chain I suppose I'm going into the bit here that I can see where these two bits intersect as long as I am consistent with where I'm always going into my sides are always going to be relatively straight so I'm going to do my turning chain I'm going to locate my first place and put my single crochet in and then I'm going to just pop my stitch marker in so I know, okay, that's where I'm going to be joining. Chain one and place a double. And there you have the very easy but really super effective wattle stitch. So thank you ever so much for joining me on day 11. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the series. I've got a really special snowflake coming up for day 12. Um, the final day it wouldn't be Christmas without. Fingers crossed for a white Christmas, which I'm not sure... Um, 
I can even remember ever having one but if you are somewhere where you do have a white Christmas then please let me know equally you might be somewhere where it's beautiful you know 30 degrees very hot Christmas um in England it's a grey drizzly Christmas as always but we're kind of used to it um so please subscribe if you would like to see more crochet tutorials we've got a really great community of happy hookers and um, some wonderful comments from everybody um, and I'm, I'm really thankful for your engagement um, notification bell for the last day of 12 days of christmas happy hooking and i'll see you soon bye